Hi everyone, Guy and Penny from Midwinter Minis here for a special bonus episode of our Blackstone Fortress painting series. Woo! <laughs> In this episode, we're going to be painting the Amble model from the Dreaded Amble expansion pack. I'm not sure what the world record is for buying a model, painting it, and putting out a tutorial video all on the day of release, but surely this is going to be a contender. We were debating what colour scheme to paint the Amble in, and although they haven't uploaded one yet, we're sure that Warhammer TV will put out an official painting guide that you can follow if you want the model to look like the box art. To me, the new sculpt of the Amble reminds me a lot of the Zoonoids from the Giver. My favourite! <laughs> I mean, specifically, it looks like they mixed Zerubbabuth and Darzeb from the anime and Monk from the second live-action film. <laughs> oh my god. You've just made, like, two people really, really happy and the other million of them think that you're a massive loser. <laughs> including me. Oh, I mean, I am making Warhammer painting tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know I love it, really. Anyway. As the Amble is a tunnelling, subterranean bug monster that's super pissed that your explorers are anywhere near her babies, I think painting it up like a giant space termite would probably be pretty fitting. So a pale, fleshy body transitioning through brown to black at its pincers and mandibles. Also, just a quick tip, when you're assembling this mini, be careful not to put any pressure on the little wiggly bits at the top of their bodies or the larvae that are falling off her. Those parts are really fragile and you wouldn't want them to break off. Wiggly bits. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> Before he started painting, Guy added some extra details on the base by super gluing aquarium gravel and sand in random spots. And to begin the painting, I primed the model with grey spray primer. I then switched to black spray from a rattle can and sprayed carefully from above trying to catch the armour plates, head, claws and the base. I left the flesh with as much grey as I could to help with our lighter tones later. And once the sprays had dried, I started painting the pale flesh of the body. I mixed white with flesh tone, added a drop of water and used a large brush to start painting all of the areas of flesh. If you're wondering exactly what paints Guy is using in this tutorial, for the whole series he's been using the same 14 paints, and you can find out what they are, and alternatives from different brands, in the video description. Now you don't need to be tidy during this stage, just zip around the model making sure all the fleshy parts are painted. Also paint the little nodes on the armour plates too, all of the larvae as well as the eyes to help lighten them up for later. Depending on how light your grey was, you may need a second coat of this colour to make it nice and smooth. And next we're going to mix black, brown and red in equal parts thinned with a touch of water to start painting the carapace of the amble. Now don't paint the face, claws or feet, we want to leave these black for now. And for the most part, you probably still want to use your large brush for quickly covering the large areas. You can swap out to your standard brush when you get close to the edges, or to tidy up the areas around the nodes on the carapace. When you're happy with that, use a little thinned red paint to add some colour to the multiple gross bug eyes on its face. Don't worry too much about the edges, as we'll tidy these up in a minute. Now, get your grey paint out, thin it with water so it flows nicely, and start painting the debris and rocky elements of the base. And once you've sorted out those little bits, we're going to crack out our black paints and reinforce the black areas of the model. So for this scheme, we want to make sure the mandibles, face, claws and flat areas at the base are all covered. So here's what it looks like so far with all the basic colours blocked in. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying Guy's manual 360 degree turntable skills. Thanks to the donations we've received recently, we've ordered a motorised turntable so Guy won't have to do this anymore. Oh, <laughs> I quite like doing it. So next we'll be doing a bit of dry brushing to bring out some of the texture and help create a transition from the flesh to the carapace. First we'll do this with our neat flesh tone paint. 
and using your dry brush, work the paint into the bristles and try to remove as much as possible on an absorbent surface, and then start working the brush in sweeping motions across the carapace. Avoid the areas you want to be black, so the face and feet and claws. After that, Guy did exactly the same thing, but with white paint brushed very sparingly over the mandibles, face, claws, feet, and debris on the base. To help create some diversity of tone in the flesh, you can also use the white dry brushing there too, just be careful not to catch too much of the armour. It also means you get to rub his belly in circular motions, which is quite cute. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Oh wait, it's not a him, it's a her. It's a mama. Patriarchy! <laughs> anyway. So here we go again with the low-tech turntable, uh, and this is how the beast looks so far. Next up, we're going to use our brown wash to cover pretty much the entire model. Again, all except the areas we want to be black. When you're washing such a large model, it's quite important that you do it in sections and don't leave wash sitting for too long next to an unwashed part. This can leave tide marks when it dries that are really difficult to shift. You're actually full of quite good advice. Thanks. <laughs> Try to work quickly and let the capillary action of your brush draw away excess wash from anywhere that it's pooling too much. While you're waiting for that wash to dry, crack out your black paint again, wap it out, and reinforce the black of the base, the flat surface, and the rim. Wap it out. Wap it out, mate. <laughs> and here's how the amble looks after the brown wash has dried. Definitely starting to come together. So again, making sure it's completely dry before we begin, we can start using the black wash in the same way, but this time focusing obviously on the black areas. To make a transition, streak the brush back across the carapace. It will be very subtle when it dries, even though it looks pretty extreme right now. After this final wash stage is dry, you could definitely call this speed paint done. Just like the rest of the series, to get to this stage we've used almost no detailed brushwork, just simple effective techniques to get the model game ready. We can obviously go further, and just before we do, just a quick shout out to Anton for his kind donation since the last episode. Thank you so much, mate. And if you've enjoyed the video so far, please like the video to help other people find this tutorial, and subscribe if you haven't already. So if you want to get a bit more detailed, we'll crack out our detail brush, obviously, and using a mix of red and yellow, add some highlight to the Amble's eyes. Be slow and steady, and just take your time. Remember, if you get any of this into the recesses, you can just use brown wash in the sockets to dull it down, so don't worry too much. Next, we're going to mix our original pale flesh tone that we used to base coat the fleshy areas, but add one more drop of water to make it more transparent. Using your detail brush, start picking out the nodes on the carapace. Again, like with the eyes, just be slow and take your time. Aim for the centre of each node, and don't worry about painting the whole thing, we're just highlighting. Once you're happy with the nodes, you can move on to highlighting some of the muscles of the fleshy body. Look at the muscularity! <laughs> Is that that hero quest, man? Yeah. The best thing about hero <laughs> quest! <laughs> yeah. So, uh, gently trace your brush over the muscles, making little dashes lengthways across each one. And this suggests a sort of natural muscle fibre texture, and it's an easy way of making big muscly things look really really good, really easily. And as with all highlights, avoid the recesses and just focus on the areas that are visible. And once you're done with this step, you're done with the space termite themed amble. A nice, simple, but effective scheme that's fun, quick and pretty easy to paint, and looks great on the tabletop. Also, if you're looking for a colour scheme for a Tyranid army, this would be a really cool way of doing that too. In the next video, we'll show you how to paint the bases of your Blackstone Fortress models. I know we said that in the last video, but 
you wanted to see Amble really, didn't you? <laughs> Bye for now. Bye! Man, we're such professionals.